Jalen Rager was asked a question about whether or not he's feeling comfortable that he's got a spot on the um, Eagles. And you know what he says? I guess I have to make the team now. I, I, um, I'm being humbled. That's the difference between Devontae Smith and that dude. Devontae Smith goes out every day proving that he belongs on the team and he belongs in the league. Some guys think they're entitled to it. Oh, um, by the way, what, what, first round privilege. Let me tell you what that is here first a little bit here. Okay? The national cutoff show. That's what Xander says. But then again, sometimes Xander goes like this, dude, these hard outs with you and all this stuff. So it's all good. Hey, we appreciate everybody coming aboard here with us. 22 is better on paper, but they lack special teams. That's a great point. I'm going to get back to all that. Thank you, 85. Um, First round privilege. You know what it is? It's your wide receiver called Jalen Rager. Oh, I have to make the team? What? You mean I... I have to make the roster? That's first round privilege. It happens to these guys. You know, you're raised in it. You believe it because you know the other second and third and fourth rounders. They live their life normal. You're a first rounder. And you get all the executive privileges of being a first rounder. I don't have to make a team. Okay. I don't have to make a team. I'm a first rounder. I have first round privilege. Jalen Rager was asked a question about whether or not he's feeling comfortable that he's got a spot on the um, Eagles. And you know what he says? I guess I have to make the team now. I, I um, I'm being humbled. That's the difference between Devontae Smith and that dude. Devontae Smith goes out every day proving that he belongs on the team and he belongs in the league. Some guys think they're entitled to it. That's his training at Alabama. Dude, I'm not coming out of a football game. You imagine playing at Alabama and you're – Devontae Smith, and you got Jamison Williams behind you. You got Waddle on the team. You got all these dudes that are in that huddle and in that room. Bro, I ain't coming out for shit. I'm not coming out. I may lose my job. That creates competition, and also it keeps you on your edge. And you know what also it does? You're never in a comfort zone, which means there's always a sense of urgency. And you play your career with a sense of urgency. But you see, Jalen Rager doesn't look at it that way. It's taken him three years in his first round privilege. Okay? His first round privilege. Oh, I got to make the team? I've been humbled. What a... What a sorry-ass conversation he must be when you're talking to him. He's one of those dudes that just don't get it. Dude, you've sucked since your first day in the NFL. You're terrible. I don't think you've ever had over 30 yards in a ball game. And you were a first-round pick. We are not going to sit here on this show and ever give you kudos for anything. I had a good practice yesterday. Who cares? Your production is un-NFL worthy. You would struggle in the Canadian League because those guys play for less money and less hype and less exposure. That probably bug you too. First round privilege. Yeah.
What a loser. I hear comments like that. You should be seen and not heard because your performance has been seen and not heard for three years. Dude, you got a guy in Minnesota that's lapped you 700 times. If it was a fight, they'd have called it. If it was an UFC MMA fight, Dana would have jumped in the ring and said, this thing's over. Okay, it's over. No more hits to the face. This thing's over, dude. This guy still thinks he's in a fight. And the only reason he keeps that position is because, well, I don't know now because how he covered it with AJ. You ever notice all the failures that Howie has had as a general manager? He's covered with free agency. It'd be a corner. It'd be a wide receiver. It'd be a linebacker. Look, if N'Kobe Dean doesn't work out, Kaiser White is. Isn't it pretty crazy how that matches up? Jalen Rager sucks. AJ, he made a trade for. Okay, kind of like X's out that. I'm, I want the roster. Hey, by the way, you can eat the dead cap money. I want the roster seat. The roster seat is more important because I got to determine whether or not I'm going to keep 10 O linemen or if I'm going to keep another linebacker because I've got to work on my special teams, which are atrocious. Okay. This guy's worried about this shit here. Okay. And the Kobe Dean doesn't work out. Kaiser White does. Right. Brandon Graham, Brandon Graham, okay? I like the kid. Derek Barnett? Derek Barnett. Well, I went and got Hassan Reddick to cover that one. Look how that works. Derek Barnett, Hassan Reddick, A.J. Brown, Jalen Rager. You know? He's good at it. Well, you know, man, I've been just bombing on wideouts. Let me go over here and get this guy. By all accounts, Devontae's good. Hey, gaming, 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 gaming. You're right. But here, gaming, I'm glad he fixes his mistakes too. But don't double down on them by putting roster spots in jeopardy by putting those guys on the team. And there's three roster spots on the team that should be going to players that will contribute this year and not to players who are there just because Howie doesn't want to look bad. That's not productive. That's counterproductive and doubling down on mistakes. Dude, cut your losses. Look at what New England did. They kill Harry. They realize he sucked. Cut their losses. Got rid of his ass. They don't care about taking heat in New England. Imagine if Howie took Jefferson instead of Rager and Metcalf instead of Umbrella Man. We would be good for a decade. What awful picks. Yeah, but wait a minute. To what people are saying, though, he has gone back and covered him up and made him better. At least he does address him. He does. Chris, I don't know why. You know what? Chris, that shows you. Yeah, I I got that, Xander. Hey, Chris, that just shows you, though, that the general manager has more say over the team than the head coach does because a coach would go, get that guy off my ball team. I need the roster spot. Here, let's do this. Who shouldn't be on the team that has a roster spot right now? Jalen Rager's one of them. Derek Barnett's the other one. Both first rounders. Derek Barnett and Jalen Rager should not be on this football team. They should not be on this football team. There's two roster spots. Okay? White side. No, that's not true. Smile. Jalen Hurts, a second-round draft choice, 
has clearly proven he's a second round draft choice quarterback. He's clearly proven that. Not true. I would now, I would have said this to you. I would never take a Jalen Hurts in the second round. I thought that was a colossal disaster what they did. But I would say this to you. Hey, man. Okay, now he, he he's he's lived up to that draft position. Dude, hey, Mr. International, you say Dillard? I say this to you. I don't know, man. Teams call the Eagles all the time for that guy. By the way, in this hour, our friend from WFAN, Craig Carton will join us at the bottom of the hour, 5.30 Eastern. We'll talk Giants, Jets, and Eagles. He also was a former radio host at WIP in Philadelphia, so we'll talk with him. I believe we could get a first rounder now for Hertz. I don't. You think if you put Jalen Hurts on the open market, you get a one for him? Who? You think the Texans would surrender a one for him? You think Carolina would surrender a one for him? I'm giving you the shitty teams. You think the Saints would surrender a one for him? Name me a team where you think you'd get one or better yet, 40 million for him. His values in Philly, because they're building the team around him. That's what his, that's what his, that's what his strength is right now. They're building the team around him. His, his highest values in Philly. A late first rounder. Yes. Someone dumb would come along sales. I, I just, I find that hard to believe. I find that hard to believe that someone would surrender a one for him. Baker Mayfield has done 10 times more than what, um, 10 times more than what Jalen's done. I mean, remember something, everyone always looks at Baker and I'm including me. Okay. He took over an 0 16 football team and they did go to the playoffs with him. And he did change the culture around. Okay. They wanted better in Deshaun. He's a better player. I don't know a better person. I doubt he's a better person. But at the end of the day, they wanted a better player at that position. Okay. I mean, Baker Mayfield's actually in ball games. I'm not saying that he's a good quarterback, but he's more accomplished than Jalen's ever been at this stage in their careers. See here. Baker's a bum. Well, dude, again, I hope I hope Jalen wins some games that matter. He's not won a game that's mattered. That's what I'm saying. And I said this in the first hour. It's not going to be about statistics with Jalen. It's going to be about beating Minnesota. Cards, Cowboys, Colts, Washington, the Packers, the Titans, teams like that. It's not going to be about statistics with him. It's going to be about being in significant ball games and making plays in those ball games and showing me he's an NFL quarterback and not a running back playing the quarterback position. Okay. B. Lewis says, you're high if you think Baker's better. I said he's more accomplished. Once again, listen. I said he's more accomplished. He is. He's thrown 28 touchdowns in the AFC. He's more accomplished. You can't get any around it. I don't think he's, I said it. I don't think he's very good. Jose says Baker is playing better, but Hurts has a higher ceiling. I disagree. I don't think running quarterbacks have a high ceiling. What running quarterback has a high ceiling? Name me one. That they've won significant games. And when you say Cam, Cam's 6'6", 
257 pounds, threw for 4,000 yards in his career, has a 30-touchdown season in his career, and he's an MVP. Look at him now. He's out of work. Because that style of play, look at what Vic didn't do shit. Lamar Jackson led the NFL in touchdown passes, my friends. He threw 36 TDs one year. Was a unanimous MVP. Won 15 ball games in the AFC. Easy. I wouldn't consider McNair a running quarterback. Hey, Mr. International, what did Vic ever win? He was fun to watch. What did he ever win? A game in Green Bay. Steve Young was the most completion percentage, statistically gifted quarterback when he retired in NFL history. I'm not a Howie cheerleader at all, but he built a roster that will win games no matter who the quarterback is. Name another GM right now that can do better. Les Snead. I'll take Les Snead in Los Angeles. Last four years, he's been to two Super Bowls, won one of them. He's got two NFC championships. Les Snead. Let's see. Um, like what Jason Light's doing with the Buccaneers. That's a pretty good-looking football team down there. Green Bay's won 39 ball games in three years. And by the way, the Eagles have to beat teams like that. Okay? Fran Tarkenton, when Fran Tarkenton retired, he retired the all-time leading passer in yardage, broke Unitas' record, which stood for 35 years. Wasn't just a runner. Joe Barry in Cleveland, <laughs> hey, we thought he had a pretty good offseason going until, uh, you know, yeah, right? Until the league came knocking. No, 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 Steve. Steve says Hurts can't beat a good team. No, 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 Steve. He hasn't beat a good team. I didn't say he couldn't. He hasn't as of yet. I never said that. I said he hasn't beaten a good team yet. He didn't beat a winner last year at all. As a matter of fact, that got destroyed. Eagles can beat Green Bay this year. Well, you're going to get your shot in week 12. Gordon says, Baker had two of the top 10 rushers. The Eagles had the number one running attack in the league last year. They may have had Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, but you had the number one running attack in the league last year. He beat the Saints when they had a no bro. The, the, what, did the, what was the Saints record in 2000? What was their record last year? Let's take a look at that. What was the Saints record in 2021? They were a non-playoff 9-8 and eight team, I think. That's what that says, I believe. Okay, that's a, that's a good game. Hey, I know, right, Michael? People can't hear, dog. Nine wins, 9-8, and eight. great. Here, what was Jalen Hurts' number in that? I think if I'm not mistaken, didn't the Eagles run for 248 yards in that game? What was Jalen Hurts' numbers in the Saints 2021 game? Let's see here. You guys say that he was a significant factor in that game. But I tell you what, they ran the hell out of that. They did a great job running the ball. 
if I'm not mistaken. They, yeah, there it is. They rushed for 244. And Jalen had 69 yards. Hertz was 13 of 24 for 147. Thirteen to twenty-four for one forty-seven. <laughs> Pretty good game. Beat the Broncos last year. Didn't have a winning record. I told you, man. You're not listening. It's hard to believe that Tarkington didn't win at least one of those four. If I'm not mistaken, I think Joe Cap Greg took one of those teams to the Super Bowl. I don't think Tarkington took all four. I, I I think Bud Grant had Joe Cap one year, and I think Cap actually won the won the MVP award that year, and I think Tarkington went to the other three if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I, I, if if I if I remember right, Fran Fran lost three Super Bowls, and Cap won or Cap went to the other one. If I think, Steve Hertz does not suck. I, I don't I don't go there. Carolina had a winning record when we played. <laughs> okay. Carolina sucked last year. Yeah, Greg, I, I I cap was the other guy, if I'm not mistaken. Had a winning record. I, I love that. That's like the college football guy. Well, they were ranked fourth when we played them. Would they end up? They weren't on. They were unranked. Oh, okay. Yeah. By the way, Craig Carton will join us. Afternoon host from WFAN real soon. We'll talk to him. Get his thoughts on the Gigantes, Jets. I know he's a Jets guy. And we'll ask him about Zach, Zach Wilson, and that football mess. The Jets are the Jets. I'm not a Robert Saley guy. So I want to get his thoughts. He's By the way, he's down at the University of Miami right now, dropping his two kids off. I'm trying to get him on the practice field. And I text Mario. <clears throat> I'm trying to have him go by practice so he can go by the University of Miami and pick some stuff up. Yeah, Xander, that's how I do business. <laughs> that's how I do business. <clears throat> hey, can you come on? All right, I'll, I'll send you to practice. <clears throat> uh. Dude, didn't you call Hertz a tomato can? Yeah, I did. But, Chris, I can't now because yesterday after Michael Irvin said that you guys have the beginnings of a dynasty, I, I'm, 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 I've am I'm, kind of been thrown for a loop. You know, I've been thrown for a loop because there's a dynasty being built and there's $40 million on the table waiting for Jalen Hurts at the end of the day. Okay. I think Carolina will be much improved this year. With 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 Baker Mayfield as a quarterback, I think it all comes down to whether or not Christian McCaffrey. They did, Mister International. I think the Joe. I think Joe Douglas is doing a nice job. I think the head coach is not the right guy, though. <clears throat> okay. Randall Cunningham could run and throw, Mister International. The problem with Randall Cunningham's era was they didn't spend money in O linemen. Okay. Yeah. So, hey, hey, Chris, everything's there for him, man. Look at this. You guys been telling me today that this team's better than the 17 team. I heard Eagle fans come on this program today and tell me that you think this team right now is Howie Roseman's best creation and his best football team he's ever built. Look at what we're doing here today on August 11th. You guys have circled around this team and said, this is Howie in his 22 years of either being a cap guy or in charge of personnel or a GM where he's had control. This is his best group he's ever built. Okay. <clears throat> you know, it's funny when you build a company, you're looking for profits and we're going to see what the payout is <clears throat> real soon. We're going to find out what the payment is. Michael said this team's unproven. 
wasn't asking you that. I'm proving. I ask you, is this the best football team that Howie's built since he's been in charge? Why are we talking so much about the offense when we're letting quarterbacks set personal best completion percentages and consecutive completions? I we, we, We've addressed it. I think they're better on that side. I like the linebacking core. I think it's complete. And by the way, the reason I like the Eagles so much is because of that side of the ball. I think they've improved the corner. I think they've showed us that they could be better even at the safety positions. The linebacking core could be the best they've had in decades. You may have to go back to the McNabb era linebackers that you have some of the best groupings that you've had at that position in a long time. Joseph said this is the best defense under Howie. That's quite a statement. That's quite, yeah, especially when you have guys like Jeremiah Trotter back in the days. Those are great linebackers. (laughs) Jeremiah Trotter could hit people. I mean, you're talking about some of the greatest linebackers. I don't think it's in the same category as the Seth Joyner linebacking core. That was probably your best safety group and your best secondary group that gained green. That gained green, that's your benchmark on defense when it comes to position groupings. That's your greatest uh, defensive line of all time. Clyde Simmons and all them dudes, Jerome and Reggie. I mean, that was your best defensive line by far. We need a thumper. You know what, man? I tell you, um, keep an eye on Kaiser White. Under Howie. Yes, Joseph. Under Howie. Under Howie. Okay? Under Howie. So, hey. Look, guys, I'm going to tell you one more time. I I really believe that this is going to be a very interesting season. I do think that this football team has talent. And you know what? Even listening to Michael Irvin yesterday, make no mistake about it. You know, even with Michael Irvin, the way he's talking, he looks at it too the same way. Now, to some of you on what you guys said, look at here, man. Quarterback and the coach. Even a coordinator. Those three dudes have to be significant contributors this year in moments to win games. 